So there's a whiskey from a particular distillery that I've wanted to get my hands on for a while now. And after listening to that, you're probably thinking the usual suspects, so Macallan perhaps, or Ardbeg, or maybe one of the closed ones like Little Mill or something like that. And the answer is none of those. The answer is probably not at the top of many people's lists, but for people that do know about it, they have extremely positive things to say about it. And that caught my eye. I, I tend to look out for these sort of whiskies that they don't set people's hairs on fire in terms of the general sphere, but f sort of for people that have tried them, they have no faults really to say for them. Bladnock was one of them, and I totally get that. I totally get why people rave about it, because it is, as, as I'm sure you're aware by now, I, I have strong feelings about that whiskey. I think it's a great whiskey. I won't shut up about it. But this is another one, and it's not actually an official release from them. It's an independent bottling, and we'll get into why I couldn't get my hands on an official bottling shortly. But for now, this is Ben Nevis. It's a 10-year-old, and it's an independent bottling by Signatory. Uh, it's part of their Unchill Filtered collection. We've come across their work before with Edredauer, uh, another 10-year-old, which again, absolutely knocked my socks off. I have yet to try the standard Edredauer 10, partly because I just don't know if it could possibly ever match up. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it's also substantially amazing, but that was that was one of those whiskies that kind of did set my hair on fire this year. Um, this one is cask 130. It is uh, got some sherry cask makeup in there, but um, judging by the colour of it, it's a pretty worn out sherry cask. Um, from what I've been able to look up, which has been difficult, because uh, I want to know specifically the kind of cask that was used, because it's strange that you can get the number which doesn't really mean much, but when it comes to, well, is it a sherry cask? Is it a port pipe? Like, what, what was the cask? Um, and it seems to be an agreement that it was a sherry cask of some sort, but beyond that, there's no information. Um, so that's interesting. I, immediately, I pulled this out already because it's a 10-year-old. I wanted to give it a chance to kind of kind of air, and it's, it's very light. Um, it's natural colour, which is amazing, um, and it's, it's like it's almost like white gold, almost, you know, it's, it's almost like the cask has had very little in terms of colour influence, um, but I'm, I'm curious by this one. Now then, I did mention already that I couldn't get my hands on the Ben Nevis 10 from the distillery itself, and there's a reason for that, and Lord knows it's not from trying. I keep looking and it keeps being sold out. These guys are owned by uh, Nika, the Japanese whiskey company, um, and the majority of Ben Nevis goes into Japanese whiskey. It gets shipped off. It's 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 off. It's away. Um, so they don't bottle a great deal of Ben Nevis 10, and for the simple reason that Ben Nevis 10 doesn't sell particularly well, whereas Japanese whiskey, people are still going hand over fist for the stuff, which is a little bit weird because Japanese whiskies have kind of declined in quality quite sharply over the last few years. They've done what a lot of successful distilleries and brands and names have done, which is, okay, we've proved our worth, now we can just churn out any old shite for twice the price and people will still buy it because they think they're buying into this and they will still drink it because they just kind of assume that, oh, I must be wrong because people said that it was X, Y, and Z and really good, rather than trusting on their own judgment. It's more common than you might expect. But, um, as a consequence of that, I couldn't get my hands on it. You can get a cash strength release, but it's about £120. And I didn't want to dive in with that much money without knowing that I like the character of the distillery first. So, we're going to do our normal things with the whiskey. We're going to nose taste and all the rest of it. And I'm, I'm going to pass judgments on this whiskey. Now then, I have already smelled it. And I've got to say, the smell on it is incredible. It's extremely malty. Um, it's almost like smelling Geneva. If anyone's ever tried that, it's... I don't know how to describe Geneva. It's sort of like a distilled barley distillate, essentially. Um, it, it smells like fresh bread, basically. And this has that same kind of, like... Oh, yeah, it's still there. Yeah, it's it's quite incredible, actually. It's, it's reminding me a lot of... Um, so Lindor's Abbey's new make as well. It's it's giving me a lot of that kind of really bready, almost like sourdoughy kind of an aroma. It's really grain rich, really grain rich. Like freshly pop popcorn before you've like chucked any seasoning on it as well. 
And then once you get past that, there is like a, a faint kind of a caramelly. It's not quite caramel. What is it? Do you know, it's reminding me a little bit of gold bars. Not like bullion. I mean, like um, they're like these biscuit bars that McVitie's make. Actually, here's a better one. Um, it reminds me of Caramac. That's it, because that's basically the same coating that these biscuit bars have. It's like a caramel white chocolate that it's reminding me of. Yeah, yeah, actually, Caramac. Don't know why I was struggling with that, actually. Oh, I could really go for a Caramac right now. Hmm, okay. Um, I should stick this in my mouth, shouldn't I? Because that's, that's what the majority of whiskey tasting is. It's putting it in here. That's a bit of an adventure. It's like stewed raisins and currants, and then you've got like this almost like pepperminty kind of a finish. And then sort of like a, almost like a, a subdued sticky toffee sauce in the middle. It's it's a little bit all over the place to be honest, but it's, it's all good stuff. And it all has a, a very definite signature to itself as it goes through these stages. It, it doesn't kind of like muddy together, like sort of like gray clay or anything like that. It's it's very much kind of like broken down into its own little stages. We'll double down on all three of those. Um, raisins at the start and then kind of like a caramel toffee sauce and then it goes really sort of, it's, it's spearmint. That's what it is. It's this kind of like sharp minty edge on the finish. It's warming without being crap, um, which is lovely. And there is like a little bit of a white chocolate kind of coming in towards the finish. It's super long in terms of like the finish. It, it lingers. Um, I don't want to say that it's thick because every time I do, people keep commenting that it's a thick one again. Um, so I, I don't want to say it, but it is. So knock yourselves out down below. Oh, that came out wrong. It's, it's got a real um, sort of rough and ready character to it. It does. It's, it's reminding me a little bit of like, um, like soda bread and... I don't know, I'm just getting like flashes of like a shed. Um, there's something quite rugged and industrial about it. And at the same time, it's a little bit like comfy. It's like a, a country cottage almost, you know, it's a bit bit rough and ready, but it's, th that's not a flavor profile, but it's, it's kind of what it's reminding me of. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that really, um, but it's got a really, I don't know, such a sort of classic malt signature, for want of a better way of putting it. I'm going to stick a little bit of water in, and I'm just going to stick in a little bit, because I really don't think it needs it. Yeah, a little bit more than that. I'm just getting that on the carpet. Oh, no, there we go. Right, literally a dribble went in there. Probably more went on me than in the, the whiskey, to be fair. It's clouding a little bit. Uh, it's all the good stuff. It's 46% non-chill filtered uh, natural colour. Signature are quite pernickety about that, um, which we love. Most independent bottles kind of have to give a bit more of a fuck because they need to be able to sell the product. Um, and most people that buy independent bottlings are the kind of people that have kind of like started looking into their whiskies a little bit more. Um, if your bog standard Joe, Sue and Mary on the street knew how good value they are sometimes, they should buy them as well. But they don't know they exist because they're a little bit hidden away in a lot of ways. Um, Douglas Lang is doing some good work with like indie bottlings, trying to make them a bit more accessible. But yeah, they're, st they're still kind of niche. You know, the, the same thing that like um, you've got your standard Monday to Friday coffee drinker and then you've got a person with an AeroPress at home. You know, it's like they're, they're different camps. They're, they're different sort of worlds almost, for want of a better way of putting it. And it's, it's the same with whiskey. It's the same with gin. It's the same with camera equipment and furnishings and whatever else you care to name you know there's people that have you know your normal life and you have other things to get on with and then there's us that you know aren't married don't have kids don't even know how to work a washing machine half the time and we have to fill the void somehow so we fill it with puerile pursuits like whiskey or coffee or collecting champagne bottles or whatever the fuck it is it's got a bit more Gardeny now, it's like a. It reminds me a little of like um. It reminds me a bit of apothecary rose, like. Old Curiosity, the gin company in Edinburgh. Um, I have many examples of their work. Um, 
they one of their core releases um the floral gins is apothecary rose and it's it's reminding me of that on the nose yeah it's quite, it's quite floral and a little bit sort of sour as well on the nose i'm digging it and oh a little bit like orange orange oil in there as well huh yeah these are all notes that i don't normally get with whiskies that's I normally just say everything just smells and tastes like caramel, don't I? So this is a little more challenging for me, but I'm, I'm into it. It's bizarre, a little bit violety as well. It's like floral and citrusy and... And there's still that wonderful malt character coming through as well. It's kind of like if somebody decided to open up an artisanal bakery inside of a florist. That's the best way I can think to describe it. Oh, it really didn't need water. It has kind of washed it out a little bit. What I am getting, that raisin opening has disappeared. And it's kind of transformed itself into a little more, it's much more subdued and mellow. I'm getting kind of like a tiger bread kind of a thing. It's, it's quite yeasty and then there's that like slightly metallic tang that comes with tiger bread sometimes. I'm, I'm big into it, not everyone likes it. Um, it's reminding me a little bit of like full fat milk as well. There's like a, you know how like milk does have a flavour? Some people like to argue it doesn't, but it, it does, right? It's it's a really subtle flavour, but it does have a flavour. It's reminding me of that. Like a fruit yoghurt kind of a thing at the back. It's kind of like fruit and cream coming together on the finish. The mint's gone completely. I, do you know, I'd say don't put water in this if you happen upon it. The whole point of this really was to finally kind of dive in and find out what, whether it is actually worth pursuing. Um, and judging off of this, it's got such a unique character. Like it's such of its own signature. I'm I'm more fascinated now to try out what Ben Nevis is like, like the core expression. There are loads of indie bottlings. Um, I don't tend to cover many indie bottlings now because they're sort of in the same camp as craft beer. In that, by the time you release a video about it, people have stopped giving a fuck about it because chances are it's already been all sold out anyway. Um, so that's why I've started kind of sticking more towards core expressions. I'm glad I did this though, because it's given me a good idea of kind of what Ben Nevis is like as a core expression, and I'm, I'm big into it, I'm digging it. It's great. Um, it kind of goes all over the place, but I like it. Um, have you had a chance to try anything from Ben Nevis, you lucky sods? Uh, if you have, leave a comment down below. Let me know what your experiences were like with it. Do you have your own tasting notes? Uh, my scores for the whiskey will be down below as well. I need to go away and have a, f a bit of a think about this, because it's... It's an unusual one, it is. Um, I definitely like it, but it's odd. Certainly odd, very characterful, very unique. Um, but for now though, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you want to support the channel, there's many ways you can do it. Uh, you can leave a, th a thumb or a like on this channel, whichever you prefer, it's the thumb up icon. Apparently if you do leave a thumb down, it's still engagement, so if you hated it, let me know. Um, just, you know, go kind if you leave a comment. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because I do this way more than is advisable. Uh, and there's also links down to my Patreon as well. Um, it's a slowly growing community of people that are insane enough to support me financially. So thank you to them, and their credits will be at the end of this video, which will be playing right now. Mm -hmm.